one time in school, um, a policeman come in, so that you'd have like a policeman to come in and speak to them about a career after school. And it come to me and I just said, I want to be a footballer. And he just laughed at me, he laughed and said, yeah, everyone wants to be a footballer. I'm Bill and I'm Mason Mount's granddad. Mason got his fighting spirit from me from my early boxing days. Yeah, he's, he's a massive part of my life. Always used to come to my training. A boxer, tough. Learning from him when I was younger. Never giving up keep working hard. Mason's passion for football was already in him, you know, it just, it was just there. Always kicking a ball, uh, all around the house, driving yeah. you mad. To use his sister as a target, if I hit your head, that's my bullseye. <laughs> for me, growing up, I was always around it. I knew nothing but football. I loved growing up in Portsmouth and being around that football culture. Hello, Kevin. Hi, mate. How are you doing? Yeah. This, bring, good, this brings back so many good memories. You being his first coach and his first yeah. manager. And just wanted to get on with it and train. Didn't want to do what other kids do. Little kids at age six messing about. Mm. He just wanted to train. I tried to base my free kick on Ronaldo. <laughs> Hit the ball by the valve and it moves. So what do you do? Top corner, top bins. Oh! The scout approached us about Mason going up to the development centre at Cobham. He was still playing Sunday football with, with Ball Hunt, and then Chelsea offered him a place in the academy. And then it became Tuesday night training, Thursday night training, Saturday morning training, and Sunday fixture. And that would be regular from the age of eight up through to 14. It became grinding at times, but you just, you know, for us as well as Mason, but you, you, just, you just did it, you know? And he never missed many training sessions. I'd probably count on one hand. At that young age, being at school as well, you have these kind of distractions that are coming in. I can't think of one party I went to when I was at school, and I never went to them. At times, we used to encourage him, look, you know, have a night off training, do something different, go to the party, have a sleepover. And he said, no, I want to go training. I was always so focused. I wanted to get home, have a good night's sleep, ready for the next day, and, and go to school and ready for training after. Mason's sacrifice was, was huge as well. Been at the academy since I was six, just signed my pro contract, Big achievement for me and my family. The first thing I kind of remember is being ball boy at the games. That was the big, big thing for me. I was so buzzing about that. Can't really be any closer than that. One thing that did stick with me as well, Jose Mourinho coming to us and telling us that if we're winning the Champions League, don't throw the ball back quick. I'll keep hold of the ball, don't throw it back. Moving from a kind of small town in Portsmouth and then moving to London, it can be quite daunting as a young boy. When Mason left home, we dropped him off at his house parents when he was 15. We drove home um, and I just cried my eyes out because I just realised that that was probably going to be the last time that he's going to actually live at home. Being a full-time player is every boy's dream when they're young. Just playing every day, that's what I love, playing football, so doing it every day is a dream come true. He's the only other boy who's been in a host parent who's watched every episode of EastEnders <laughs> and had a bath every night. <laughs> <laughs> they all wash, but they don't have a bath. He'd have an hour for a bath and then he'd go downstairs. Watch TV. Yeah. <laughs> The opportunity to go full-time at Chelsea, leave school, go into the education system within the academy with private tutoring and train every day, you know, you, you, you couldn't turn that down. This is probably, as an academy player, the biggest pitch you're going to play on. Seeing these, these players play on this pitch, and seeing where they are now um, 
is obviously something that motivates you as a young player. Being a part of that is obviously massive for me and knowing what the kind of Chelsea way is and the winning way of the academy. The run that we had, I think five years in the row, um, was, was a massive for the academy and, and to captain it the second time and be a big part of it was something that's going to stick with me for a long time. You obviously love to see a trophy cabinet full like this because it means that there's something that's going right. They have the best opportunity here if they're going to be a successful player. But the secret to any of them, for me, that was only my first view, similar to him, they have a love of the game. You just said to him, what time do we start, what time do we finish? And if we finish, you just keep going. S similar like three or four of them in that group with exactly the same. <laughs> Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. What are you doing? What do you think about Mason? <laughs> <laughs> that one is joking. Cut that. No, I've watched him since he was a young kid. I used to go over there and, and watch him train because I heard how good he was and just had that right mentality and the quality as well. He's a good guy. He's a great character and you know, always willing to listen and always willing to learn, to stay behind and do extra. And for me, that's what it takes to be a top player. And, Cheers. Pleasure. Give me the money after. Yeah, I'll pay you after. <laughs> <laughs> We've covered everything. Pretty much the same stuff you did, mate. Yeah. Spectacles, Macbeth, um, Jeff and Hyde. Football um, doesn't last a whole life, so if you've got good grades and when you finish football, you can start doing other things. If your exams are coming up soon, I felt obviously you all do well. Yeah. And then focus on that. Um, so, yeah, but we used to come in here probably after school or before training and just kick balls about. Um, and then obviously trying to get it into the top corner as well, so... Mason Mount, welcome in Arnhem. Can you tell a little bit more about yourself? Yeah, um, coming from Chelsea Football Club, moving to another country at, at 18 years old, it was difficult to start. I'm cooking for myself, not just cooking chips every night, because it's easy. I needed to cook good stuff. The football wasn't going my way. He didn't play and that was tough for him, really tough. My first professional loan and I'm not playing. It's never happened to him before. Coming through the academy, he would always play. The coach probably didn't trust me at the beginning. It was a massive test for him. Yeah, it was a good How he good would test. cope with it. It would have been easy for him to just say, I'm coming back. But he went the opposite way. He said, I will get in that team and I will show them that I am good enough. And I kept doing that every day, kept working hard, working hard, working hard, just to wait for my opportunity. I come into the team, I come on, this is one, my big opportunity to show the manager that I'm ready. And I scored. And eventually finishing the season with a lot of goals and assists and, and um, getting player of the season. So it worked out, worked out very well. Being a Chelsea boy and being a midfielder, I think there was only one person I was looking up to, that obviously Frank Lampard, so learned so much from him, watching him. It was a no-brainer for me to join Derby. And that year, I think, was probably the most influential years for me of gaining that experience and going from a boy to a man, playing in the championship. It's a tough, tough league, so I had to learn so much in a short space of time. I am Chelsea. We are Chelsea. I set myself a target from six years old that I wanted to be in the first team, and that never changes. That's always a massive goal for me. You see the history with Chelsea that the academy boys never make it of, of playing for Chelsea. Even my dad always had the worry that I wasn't going to get to the top. An 11 years history told me that you know, nobody was breaking through. Up until 17, I always said to Mason, best academy ever, best coaching, mm -hmm. best, best quality. But from 17, where do you go? The one person who totally disagreed with me was Mason. When I made my debut, obviously, it was a very proud day for him and um, something I could say I proved him wrong. That's clever for Mount, away from his man. Real chance for Mason Mount. And he 
scores here at Carrow Road for the second. I think there's a lot of challenges uh, when you when you first get into the, the team because the uh, all of a sudden expectation levels rise and you must stay humble. You must realise that the fact that you break into a team doesn't mean you've you've succeeded in what you want. That's the start of the journey in another way. And um, and the best players, I think, realise that very soon when they get in first teams, and that's when they have the longevity. Let's keep working. And one thing my dad always used to say was, and still now, that every time you train, you need to train like it's your last session. You don't know what happens at these young ages. The competition is so high. There's so many good players. First thing a footballer should have is a fighting spirit. I think it's impossible to play. Forget talent, forget all of that. If you don't have fighting spirit, if you don't have a tough character that wants to be the best and wants to work every day, wants to work for improvement, I think it's the most important attribute. I used to say to him, when I was 12 years old, when I was boxing, and I used to really want to win, and that's what I want you to do today. You can definitely take kind of bits from boxing and, and take that into football. And I think through the academies, you're fighting against other boys to, to get into the academy. You do that from a young age because there's so much competition fighting for every opportunity. I think that's, that's a big part of my game. What's just the surface of being a footballer there, that's all they see. But a lot of them don't know about the kind of away from football, the sacrifices that you give up to be a footballer, years of hard work, in training and games. It's a long road to, to perfecting your art. Nice turn by Mountain. The shot's a good one through. What a goal! That is absolutely... When I saw Mason play the first time for England, it was the greatest thing for me. It's just the pinnacle, really, you know, even at such a young age. And, and we have to pinch ourselves. I think to be successful, for me personally, it's hard work. A lot of players have talent. What makes you different is putting that talent with hard work. You're still a big player within the team because you can work hard, you can win the ball back, you can do the ugly side of the game, as people say. And that's something that my dad has always said to me, that you can't be a luxury number 10, number 8. You need to do the other side of the game to be successful and to be a big player. Um, so th that's always something that stuck with me throughout my career. It just seems like yesterday he was, he was six years of age, you know, bouncing, waiting to get in the car to drive up to the academy to actually see him achieve what he's always dreamt of and what, to be fair, to what he's always believed in. Fair play to him. I'm, I'm elated.